Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to STEM Mission Possible with me, Italy Kirby. Join me as we go through some topics in biology, in the theme, transport in living things. Thank you. So we'll be looking, as I said, at some topics, subtopics within transport and living things. And we're going to begin by introducing you to diffusion. The lesson focus for today is one, the importance of diffusion, diffusion in motion, what's happening, and to apply to where we have experienced this process in our everyday lives. But first of all, why is diffusion important to living things? It is very important. It is important to living organisms because it is an essential process for the uptake of useful materials and removal of waste materials. If you refer to your textbook, the Investigating Science for Jamaica Book 3, it clarifies that by saying that the cells of living things need to take in oxygen and food to carry out respiration. Secondly, to get rid of carbon dioxide, other wastes and excess heat. And diffusion and even osmosis are pivotal for these to occur. Let us have a, a, an internal view as to what is happening with diffusion because I know we have experienced it but let us see if we can capture what is happening with the particles within the process. Did you know molecules are always moving? They move randomly, they bump into each other and other barriers. You can imagine marbles thrown in a box. The marbles will bounce, they will collide on each other and then bounce away. Then they will hit the barriers within the box and again bounce on each other. What you will have are random movements that will cause these marbles for quite a while to keep moving and as they bounce on each other. This could be used to imagine, to conceptualize, to visualize what is happening to particles in diffusion. Let's look at it in a little bit more detail. Diffusion, again, can be considered as a mixture of molecules that tend to slowly spread apart over time. This is another way to demonstrate diffusion. Time one, time two, time three can be observed as you notice that if you were to create a grid that can observe the spreading of the particles, you will notice that a wider area is being used up for time two, and notice the core of the original um, placement of the particles. Notice that the core is becoming smaller as the particles themselves spread out over a wider area. Imagine this was a graph. It's actually measurable. How about we look at it from a, an animation to see what happens because sometimes with diffusion, there is a barrier. This barrier can be a cell membrane, the, a fabric, or some kind of medium through which the particles in motion may need to pass through. Let us observe what is happening. Here we'll notice that the barrier is porous to some degree. There are spaces which can allow the particles to pass through. So you're going to have a yes bouncing on the barrier, but also some space for it to pass through. And you will notice that it, it, it is attempting to disperse into the other space beyond the barrier in an attempt to create an equilibrium. Now, what is happening? Why is it that it is moving from where there is more to less? There is a name to describe this particular movement. This is called the concentration gradient. And this speaks to a change in concentration of a substance 
from one area to another. So for example, in diffusion, the substances, the particles tend to move from an area of greatest concentration to an area of lowest concentration. So we have the direction of net movement from higher concentration or greater to lower concentration. We say that in diffusion, molecules move down a concentration gradient. This is important to make, to distinguish the, the activity of diffusion because there are other processes by which you have the substances moving from lower to higher. So we need to ensure that we understand that in diffusion, it moves down the gradient, higher to lower. And this is in particular uh, a process that occurs with diffusion. If you can imagine, and you will see this activity in many science textbooks that introduce diffusion, where some particle is usually used in the lab that has a dense color to drop to the bottom of your beaker or your measuring cylinder and observe how that color disperses in the water. Now you may be at home, you do not have potassium permanganate, you do not have copper sulfate as many texts as I'm looking at here may suggest, but if you have a, some kind of drink mix, if you have coffee crystals, then, and if you are able to actually find a straw, you can put it to the bottom of your transparent glass and observe that. However, if you do not have a straw, you can actually use a tea bag. You place that tea bag in the bottom of a transparent glass or cup, pour the water, the hot water on it. You will actually see the color from the tea bag begin to disperse in the cup and you'll be able to watch how the concentration is dispersed. The color is dispersed evenly over a short period of time. Of course, for those who are in the culinary arts, they say that the tea seeps. So let's look at the molecular movement during diffusion. So although they move in every direction, the overall movement is outwards. Remember that term concentration gradient towards areas of lower concentration. Colored circle would represent the molecules of whatever dye you are observing. Here is a nice flow chart that summarizes what we have been covering so far. Concentrated high energy molecules diffuse to the low energy molecules. Now I know that at this stage, you would have covered solids, liquids, and gases. You would have understood to some degree that the particulate nature of matter, the particles in it, in, 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 in matter are always in motion. In chemistry, you will be looking more at what is happening with the subatomic particles, the parts of the particles, and observe the fact that there is actually movement at that level. And in physics, you will learn more about kinetic energy and get some more reinforcement with regards to the energy of movement within particles. So biology is applying quite a bit of chemistry and the physics as we are moving through STEM, science, technology. We're gonna be looking at engineering, how we use this in our everyday lives and how we are able to solve problems. Let us look at this, for example. There are factors that affect the rate of diffusion. Briefly, we just spoke about this, the concentration gradient. If it's a gradient, it means that the steeper, the higher the rate. It means that if this is really concentrated, if it really is compact with a lot of molecules and it has a facility to diffuse, it's going to diffuse very quickly. We find this in substances that have a strong scent. The reason is that 
the whatever chemical creates the odor, the molecules of that chemical is very concentrated. And so it will quickly disperse within the area around it. The size of the molecules, the weight, of course, if the molecules are large, if you look at large coffee crystals versus very tiny glucose crystals, and you place both of them in water, you would know that the tinier crystals would, would diffuse quickly in a substance. The temperature. Have you ever observed that if you took some fried chicken which you cooked yesterday out of the fridge, you've left it on the stove, getting ready to prepare for dinner, no one smells the fried chicken. However, as soon as you begin to heat it up, everybody smells that there is fried chicken in the place because temperature increases the kinetic energy of these molecules and therefore it will increase the rate of diffusion. Again, you would have done this when you're looking at change of state of matter from solids to liquids to gases. Because of the increase in temperature, molecules will begin to move more at a faster rate, at a higher rate. What about the medium? Well, the rate in gas, because of the, 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 the molecular medium, would be greater than the rate in liquid and greater than the rate in solid. Hence, air fresheners versus the, the ones that you spray versus the gels, you know, the, the, the solid one would last a little longer in the home. You know, however, the one you spray will give you immediate action, but not as long standing as the, the solid air freshener that you may use. No, the surface area. If you have more area for the molecules to disperse, then it will utilize the area. So the larger the area, the higher the rate, least resistance. I want for us to do this activity together. It is, it comes from the website, the FET website, and I'm gonna transfer you to that page and I want you to join me in this activity. If you go on FET, you can look up diffusion and there may be options you can look for this particular one. I'm gonna teach you how to use it. It can get complicated, but this can be used for basic to advanced. Let me give you the basics. First thing, click data. Data will tell you how many red, red balls to use versus how many blue. And these are gonna represent molecules, blue molecules, red molecules. You decide what team will you be on today? blue team or red team, because we're gonna work on this together. Secondly, let me invite you to click particle flow rate. For right now, we're not so advanced, we won't click stopwatch, but I'll tell you what it is for as we progress through the lesson. We're gonna do two stages. Now, let us decide on how many blue molecules for our blue team we're gonna use. Can I give it 30? 30 blue molecules for red. Can I give you 10 red molecules? Let us remember what we learned about the factors that affect diffusion. The higher the concentration, it would increase the concentration gradient and that would move the fastest. So let's start before we begin and then let's prove it. We must always have a hypothesis, an idea of what it is to expect. Then we prove or disprove it from what we have learned. So we have 30 blue and 10 red. What do you think? Which one is more concentrated? Which do you believe would move um, the, the, the fastest in a diffusion process? No, I don't. Wish for us, do not change your mass, your radius, or initial temperature right now, as we are only concentrating on the concentration, no pun intended. We will then remove the divider. When I remove the divider, I will 
direct your attention to the particle flow, which will turn up below the simulation. Keep your eyes right there. Look at the arrow immediately as you release the border, the barrier, notice the blue arrows. The blue arrow shot out first. The length of the arrow is showing the speed. Red has picked up a bit, but even within that, you'll notice that which one that the blue came out first, the red began thereafter as they are trying to create a balance. Now here's where the stopwatch becomes fun. When you learn what to do here, you could have started from the beginning. Go with me to reset the divider. And you can time how sharp your mental focus is. This will help you as you are, you may be sitting for a while on technology during the day. This will help you to, 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 to develop some hand-eye coordination and some sharpness. I'm going to start right there. I'm going to remove the divider and you can watch the time. And the aim is to watch to see when diffusion is in equilibrium. We would need to have 15 and 15 on both sides for the blue, five and five for both sides on red. Even while I'm speaking, I'm trying to find it. This can be fun. This can be fun, everyone. Ah, I almost got it at 15 and 15, but that is nuts. That is seven and three. That cannot work. We want five and five at the bottom. And so we are working this thing again. It is possible. Sometimes it just happens quickly. Sometimes it takes a while. But there, I'm almost there. I wonder if I release it a little. Ah, there we go. I'm giving myself a round of applause and I'm inviting you to join the game. Let us turn up the volume on this simulation in that we're going to investigate another factor that affects diffusion. Let's look at temperature. Remember that fried chicken. I am going to, because it's the same chicken, I, I can take off the stopwatch. Because it's the same chicken, I am going to ensure that we have 10 of each because it's the same substance that we are investigating. So we will have 10 of each to show that it is the same but different conditions. Now, the, since red reminds me of something hot, let us make red 500 degrees and let us make blue 50 degrees. So we'll assume blue is the chicken out of the fridge and the red at 500 is the chicken that you have heated up. We're gonna remove the divider. Remember to look at the particle flow at the bottom. Click play. Ah, immediately, you notice that the red had shot right over towards the side of the blue. The blue is just moving. Notice the numbers also that you have a larger number moving towards the left for the red versus the blue is still just taking its time to go over to the right side. So you can, and, and if you want to go into the time game, you can time it again just to observe. You can also simply observe, I've just put back the divider, the motion of the molecules before you have removed the divider. Notice that the red is moving at a higher rate, a higher pace than the blue molecules. So you see the chicken even by itself before you move the barrier. This is you closing the door in the kitchen so no one else will smell it and come and ask you for peace. But here it is. Notice that the molecules are moving at a higher rate than those which are cold. Let's get back to our presentation. Give yourselves a round of applause if you had tried this with me. How about our experiences? This is not just a science experiment that you do in the laboratory or an abstract simulation online. You have seen diffusion, you have used it, and I'm inviting you to this shared experience. Now, I have used Flipgrid 
So um, this is my administrator's link, but you can go on and create one for yourself. But Flipgrid is a platform which allows you to video something to show others. Others will then respond by recording themselves doing something similar. In this instance, your own experiences. It has three benefits. It allows you who host that discussion to learn about the participants, learn about your students, their personalities, how they talk, how they express themselves in a way that could not have been done so well in a classroom where you would not have had the time if you have 40 students for all 40 students of all the five biology classes to get up and share this allows them to do it within 30 seconds and you are able to meet them secondly it allows for you to assess prior knowledge and students ability for expressions thirdly it fosters peer critique so that it can build students confidence as they look at other students work and they are also able to comment and you the teacher or the host of the discussion can comment publicly for, for the other commentators to view or you can comment privately in feedback. Flipgrid also already has a grading scheme, a mark scheme, a rubric. So it, 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 it is awesome. And I want for you to visit. This was my first. And I'm going to invite you to, to visit that space with me. This was my first ever. Please view with me. Hi, I am Miss Kirby, and I experience diffusion when I use my mosquito candle, because as the odor, when I light it, as the odor diffuses in the surroundings, it confuses the mosquitoes. They're unable to pick up on my odor. However, if I step away too far from the candle scent, then Diffusion will cause the odor molecules to disperse so widely that the mosquitoes are able to pick up on my scent in between the particles. And I may get bitten more the further away from the candle that I go. Thank you for viewing that. The, you can also, as a host of the discussion, close it so that your students have privacy. External persons are not able to go in and see it. So now it's your turn. Try one. There may be also other public posts which you can view um, from other um, hosts of discussions. We have gone through the introduction to diffusion and we will therefore stop at our take five and make it count checkpoint session segment. Number one, you will get five questions. These are either true or false. Diffusion is essential for intake of nutrients in living things. Think on it, we'll check it at the end. Secondly, Diffusion is essential for getting rid of carbon dioxide from respiration in living things. Molecules only move when they're heated. Molecules will naturally spread apart over time. In diffusion, molecules move down a concentration gradient from low concentration to high concentration. Are you ready? to take five and make it count. Let's check your answers. Number one, is it essential? True, if you answer true. How about number two? Is it essential for getting rid of these substances? Yes, it is essential. Do they really only move when they're heated? No, remember that molecules are always in motion. 
even where we can't see it, there is some subatomic movement. All these particles of matter have kinetic energy. Molecules will naturally spread out over time. Yes, they will. There is a net movement. They may move at different rates based on their state. And you remember some of those factors that we looked at, but it will naturally, unless you have put something there to stop it, will naturally spread out over time. Finally, will it move down the concentration gradient from low to high concentration? Uh-oh. Yes, it moves down the concentration gradient, but from high concentration to low concentration. Give yourselves another round of applause. You have done a great job today. Remember, this is a video. You can pause, rewind, take notes, and continue to do well.